I'm going to mute so I don't have any Welcome, everybody. Glad to have y'all tonight. We 
we're gonna probably get started at like about um 6 20 because it really doesn't start until 6 15. so we'll give like a few more people um a chance to log in and stuff like that Somebody that was coming up in here. <laughs> Let's see. Come on in the room, everybody. I'm e I'm excited. Look excited about tonight okay um i don't know if nobody else is but i'm excited about it um i y'all done came over here early today child i done prayed i done everything welcome the holy spirit in here today okay as we learn about our finances where my little notebook at so as we learn about finances as we learn about you know like what God says he want for us um, and things of that nature in making like I'm excited to make the Holy Spirit real if that makes sense I got like a lot of um, what did I get I got a lot of responses and people were just like you know like they wanted to um, they wanted to better their relationship with God. And truthfully, when I seen those responses, like I wasn't expecting that. I really was expecting people to talk about finances and all of that, but it, I was like, okay, God. So like, I'm excited about us learning more about, you know, the Holy Spirit and what God wants for us and our finances and how God wants us to be. Like God really want, God really want us to be like, good with finances like he really wants us to have like how are we supposed to help other people if we don't have the finances ourselves so like that's what i'm excited about to teach about but not only are we going to learn about god we're going to learn about finances but we're also going to learn about how um how like from the therapeutic aspect and stuff like that i'm excited to teach about that too being a therapist and stuff like that so like I'm excited. We're going to learn some stuff and all of that other kind of great stuff. So if y'all have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to type it in the um, comment section or you can come off mute or whatever it is that you desire to do. Okay. And I'm going to show y'all my outfit because like, I feel cute. <laughs> I just want to say that. Okay. <laughs> My little outfit came together at the last minute, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to show y'all my little outfit, too. Okay? <laughs> okay. Let me check my email, make sure nobody else is having problems. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> make sure nobody else is having problems. We're trying to log in. I know some people are at second service. I did get that email from some people that they were they were at six, second service tonight. All right, y'all. We're gonna get started at about six twenty. Um, also, if you don't have any pen or paper, please go and get some um, because I want to make sure that we 
have everything that you, like you might want to take some notes and stuff like that so if you need to take these few moments to go and get some pen and paper please do okay what's going on Oh, it's, it ended. That's why. Also, I have a lot going on. I'm on the. Um, no, ma'am, you're actually on um, Miss Donna. You're actually on mute. So, like, when everybody came in, um, everybody just automatically went on mute. So if you, if you want to talk up in here tonight, you're going to have to unmute yourself. And uh, please don't have me just talking to myself. If you don't want to show yourself or nothing like that, please jump in the comment section and things of that nature. Um, so I, I am not, a, I'm not up here talking to myself. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, because we're going to, because I am conscious of time. So we're going to go ahead and, um, and get started um because it is 6 20 and we will be finished before by 7 15 um so yeah all right you guys so welcome to god therapy and finances i am one of your hosts i am danielle bailey of course for those of you that do not know who i am i am a therapist here in alexandria louisiana in the sin law area and I'm just excited, like I said, I'm ready to be here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with um, prayer. And then we're going to go ahead and jump into tonight's um, topic and stuff like that. So um, here we go as I let people in. All right, Father God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to come once more and again up on this evening, up on tonight, Father God. Lord God, we invite you in this place up on tonight, Father God. I actually thank you for your children who have come in up on tonight, Father God, who are hungry and thirsty after learning more about their finances, learning more about you, and learning more about therapy, Father God. Holy Spirit, come in and have your way up on tonight, Father God. Lord God, Holy Spirit, I ask that you just use me as a vessel so that what we talk about tonight can penetrate the heart, the mind, and the soul of your people upon today, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for today, God. We thank you that it is a privilege and it is an honor to serve you, God. We thank you that we even have the right mind to serve you upon today, Father God. So God, we thank you. We ask that you continue to bless us. We ask that you continue to keep us, Father God. Lord God, we, we lay our finances at your feet. We lay our burdens at your feet up on today, Father God. And for anybody that is going through something, Father God, I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus, God. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their finances, Father God. Lord God, whatever it is that they are going through, Father God, we know that you are a comforter, Father God. Holy Spirit, dispatch your angels and be with them upon today, Father God. Let them know that they are not alone, that we are not alone in this fight when it comes to our finances, God. Lord, Father God, you said that you will provide all our needs, Father God. So I know that our need are met, Father God. Lord God, you also say your word said that you are a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer, Father God. So we call upon you tonight, God, and we ask that you just be with us up on tonight, God. Share this load, Father God, that we have we are carrying with our finances, God. We repent right now in the name of Jesus for messing up the finances, God, <laughs> and whatever it is that we have done, Father God. But we are coming to you up on tonight, Father God asking you to help us straighten it out right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord God, I pray for a consistency with your children upon tonight, Father God. I pray for discipline with your children upon tonight, Father God. I pray for sacrifice upon tonight with your children, Father God. Lord God, I thank you, God, and I praise you, God, and we give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen. Like, let's, I'm, ex I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited. The, the the spirit is here okay so <laughs> let's let's just go ahead and talk about how this actually came about right how god therapy and finances came about um it came about i was doing i recently did a fast with um transformation church and so i want to say probably about day eight or nine 
this is how I know that God wants us to win with his finances, right? So probably because we did a 21 day fast, right? With Transformation Church and probably around about day eight or nine or maybe 10, probably, um, God, I was, I was listening to them pray. And so as they are praying, right? God was like, I'm just sitting up there praying too as well. God was like, you should do a corporate fast. As I'm just listening to them praying, I was like, oh, okay, you know, a corporate fast, that's what you want me to do? He was like, yeah, and I want you to do it on finances. And I was like, that first of all, <laughs> you're talking to me. Like, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not a minister. Like, I'm not, I'm not those folks. I'm just dang yeah. And God was like, the Holy Spirit, because my Holy Spirit, I don't know about y'all, but my little Holy Spirit, he a little gangster too. He a little hood. And so he was like, nah, I'm talking about you. I want you to do it. I want you to do a corporate fast. I want you to teach people about finances and stuff like that. And I want you, because because my thing is, I always say that people, um, I always, I always say sometimes like the church just tell us we need to tithe, we need to fast, um, but they don't tell us how to tithe, how to fast and how to do this. I feel like they always leave out the how to. And so God was just like, you're the person that's going to do the how to. Like, it's just not the responsibility of the preacher alone. And so I was like, okay. And so he was like, yep, I want you to do a um, corporate fast. And I want you to talk about, I want you to talk about these things right here. And when I say it was like, it was, it was fast and God had each and every last one of you on his mind when he decided to say, Danielle, go and do this corporate fast. Because I was praying about myself. I was not praying about nobody else. Okay. I'm like, Baby, this is me. This is me and God time. And he was like, no, I need you to pray for my people. So then God started putting this on my heart. And so I started praying about the fast. And so I'm like, okay. And so I was like, that's when I went to Facebook and I was like, what y'all think? And the rest is history. So that's how I know that God wants us to win when it comes to money, because God placed y'all on my heart and was like, do this for me or whatever. And so here we are. So God really wants us to win. This is how this how this fast came about and things of that nature. And I know that some people are like, why, why do we need the fast? And how is that going to help us when it comes to finances and things of that nature? If we really be honest with ourselves, um, finances is simple. Budgeting is simple math. Um, it is... It's not the, especially I get a lot of people, I need you to teach me how to budget, right? And it begins to be, okay, well, if I need to teach you how to budget, budget is simple math. Write down all your bills on one side and subtract it. And then people are like, well, I don't have enough money. Okay, well, why are you, that's a big problem too. Well, why are you spending money that you don't have? And then it begins to be our behavior patterns. Then it begins to be, you know, if we want to go back biblical, it begins to be from generational curses that has been set up on our family. And then people have really, really, really tried and they have not won with money. Like I have so many people be like, Danielle, I really have tried with my money, but I'm, I'm not able to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not able to um win with it and i'm just like it's because sometimes even the word says some of these things cannot be um i want to get the scripture for you because i can't pull up my thing right now hold on let me get the scripture and what the word actually says about that and i really this is why i wanted us to um this is why i sent y'all those anchored scriptures today because this is when I when I say anchor scripture, these are the scriptures that we're really and truly going to stand upon when it comes to God's word, right? And so it is where we at. Where is it? Hold on, let me get the scripture. Do, do, do not copy the behavior they will learn. Oh, okay. So it is Matthew seventeen and twenty one. It says, "How be it this kind of goeth not out by." not out, but by prayer and fasting. 
some of this stuff that we're going to have to go through, some of this thing with why we're not winning with money, it's simply because we're going to have to pray and we're going to have to fast about it. Like, because what you don't know, when we get into the family history, we're going to start breaking that thing down and we're going to actually start seeing how your family handles money and how how your family handles money. And then that right there, we can show you the generational habits or some people may call it generational curses. So this has been on your family since three, four generations ago and you are still dealing with it. So who's going to break it? Who's going to break the cycle of us struggling with our finances um, in our families? And so a lot of us, it's going to be us that's actually breaking the cycle, that's actually um, learning new money habits to, to really and truly like transfer down to our children's children, right? So somebody has to break the cycle. And it just clearly says that, you know, only some of this stuff that we're going to have to break, it's only going to have to be, you can only break it through prayer and fasting. And that is just the way, another way for you to arm yourself with the arm, armor of God or whatever. So that's why we're fasting. That's why we're fasting from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and like, I know that some people, this may be your first time fasting, which I'm not sure or not. If this is your first time fasting, please let me know in the um comment section. I know some people have fasted before. Um, some people may not have. If it's not, if you have not fasted before, please let me know or whatever. So fasting is just simply put staying away from food for a certain period of time. Okay, so we do have a few people that um okay, we got some first time people. Come on, come on for our first time people. Like, yo, it, can you we please cheer on our first time people who are here fasting for the first time? Y'all make sure y'all love on them because that's super important when you are saying that you are fasting for the first time um, because they need the support. And I think that that's amazing that you have decided to fast for the first time when it comes to your finances and stuff like that. So simply put, when we say fasting, it means that you stay away from, if you want to, because there's there's a lot of different fasts that you can do. You can do the Daniel fast, you can do the complete fast, but what we're doing, we're doing a fast from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. where you do not eat any food. Um, you may drink some water if you need to or whatever. Um, you can do that. If you cannot do it from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., do 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., or whatever you can fast during that time where you kind of sustain away from food but make sure you really and truly get with your doctor and um make sure that it's okay because i also want to say that too or whatever um but during this time what we are doing we're showing god look god we're making a sacrifice we are showing you hey we need your help. We really seeking you. And during this time, we're praying. We, we're working, but we're also praying and dedicating time, setting aside, set a, setting aside a time for God too, as well. So, like tomorrow, like these scriptures that I sent you, um, the anchor scriptures. Tomorrow, when you wake up, study those read over them ask the holy spirit to help you like god what does these scriptures mean and stuff like that um and god god to help you the holy spirit to help you and be like okay this is how you this is what this scripture mean and stuff like that so that is fasting and please please i can't stress this enough make sure you are praying and make sure you're reading your word um during this time too because if you're not you're not doing a spiritual fast. You're just fasting from food. We need you to do a spiritual fast with God, praying, talking to God, you know, communing with God and stuff like that. And I encourage you to set a, um, okay, hold on. Let me see. I'm still in PPM. Um, I encourage everybody, if you can, set a time aside for you and God. Okay, like every day, God, I'm gonna meet you here at this time or whatever. Well, we're gonna pray. Well, I'm gonna pray. You can pray, you can listen to worship music, you can read your scripture and stuff like that. I think tomorrow I'm gonna send out a guy, just like a little template. You can use it or if you don't want to use it, but I do want to give people a template of 
how to kind of structure your time with God a little bit. If you can give God 15 minutes or 30 minutes in the morning, if you can't do that, just give him some set aside of time every day. You can do it in the morning, you can do it in the afternoon, or you can do it in the evening, whatever time works for you, but have a meeting time with God where it's consistent. Okay, like in therapy, I have a lot of my a lot of my clients are on consistent rotating appointments, right? So they anticipate every Saturday at 10 o'clock or every Tuesday at 11 o'clock, they have a consistent appointment with me and they are coming, they're talking, they're like, oh, I couldn't wait to get here or something like that. Like have that consistent time with God. That is so important where you have a consistent time with God and God, you're saying, God, I'm going to dedicate to, I'm going to dedicate uh, my lunch time to you from 12 to 1230. That right there lets God know, okay, Put him up, put, I'm going to put her on the radar because she's going to be there from 12 to 1230. How they expecting heart for God to show up too? You know what I'm saying? I almost come with like a little agenda, me personally. I'm just like, my boy, I need you to, I need to talk about this right here. And, you know, I, I'm just going to come with, I'm going to come with the agenda. I'm going to come with the, a heart of expectation too. I expect you to meet me there, God. I expect you to say something to me during this meeting too. So coming with a heart of expectation is super duper important or whatever, because you're saying, God, I'm giving you this time from 12 to 1230. That may be all I can give right now at this moment. And I'm okay with that. If you can't give 30 minutes, if you can only give 15, I'm okay with that because as you continue to grow, so with this time, so with your time, so with your spirit, man, be like, yo, we need to go and talk to God. We need to go and talk to the Holy Spirit. And so when you start having that time, you know what I'm saying? You start welcoming. You can just easily say, hey, Holy Spirit, you welcome. So God is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And he wants you to invite him wherever he's at, wherever you at. He wants you to invite. So what we're doing now with this with this fast, we're inviting the Holy Spirit into our finances too. The when I was fasting like a couple of weeks ago, and I was like I was having this problem with my own finances and stuff like that, and I was like I'm gonna go, I'm finna, let me go research this, let me go Google this, let me go Google that, let me go Google, let me go ask somebody. And the Holy Spirit said, "Clear as day, why don't you just ask me?" I can tell you, you just ask me what it is. Just ask me the problem. And so I was like, well, what you think? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you tell me what to do. And he began to give me clear instructions, clear as day, about how to work that problem out, about how to solve that. So that's another thing with us. We're not inviting Holy Spirit. We're not inviting God into our finances. We're not inviting him to help us. We go into the next saving challenge after the next saving challenge. And I'm not against those, but they're not working because we're not asking God, could you come in? Earlier, I prayed, I asked God to give us, give me something that's tailor-made to each and every person. Allow me to say something that is tailor-made to you, okay? We need to start asking the Holy Spirit for tailor-made plans to our lives. That's why some of these plans are not working because they're not tailor-made for you. They are a standard, right? I, I did Dave Ramsey. That's who introduced me to finances. Dave Ramsey. That was a that was a guy. But then I fell up off there because I won with money a little bit, but it wasn't. I changed. I evolved. Okay. So I need to find another plan. So now I'm like, God, give me something that's tailor-made that, 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 that's for me. And, and when we ask God for something that's tailor-made, God knows us better than we know ourselves. So of course he's going to give us something that is really and truly going to help us. And that's going to work. Okay? So that's what we that's what we're kind of praying for and what we're hoping for you know um so i want y'all to also have an expectation for this fast too so when we get off write down what is your expectation out of this fast 
write that in your journal or whatever. What God, what do you want God to do, God to do for you? Like the Holy Spirit is going to be here every night. Like, I want y'all to understand that if you knew God was going to be somewhere, wouldn't you be there? Wouldn't you have everything that you want? When you have all the questions that you want to have answered, he's going to be here every night. You just got to show up and you got to have your, your questions and, and what you need and, and have those ready for him and being, and then have a spirit to listen to. And then be prepared when he corrects you. Cause when, <laughs> when correction is on the table, it's a little bit different. But that's okay, though. He can correct us, and he can do it in love, okay? So making sure you have a expectation every night, coming here, have an expectation out of this fast, and not only having an expectation out of God, but making sure you have an expectation out of yourself. What do you want to hold your own self accountable for doing this fast? And an expectation that you can have with yourself is, I, I want to attend every night. If I can't attend every night, I need to make sure I need to I need to um watch the recording. If I can't do that, I'm going to make sure I set up a schedule, a time that I have with God every day, right? So today I'm telling you, you need to set up a time that you're going to have with God that's going to be consistent every day. Because tomorrow when I get back, you're going to have to add something else to it too. I need you to have a consistent time Every day when you sit down and you review your finances, it doesn't matter what they may look like. They may look like you watching your bank account, okay? They may look like you because it's so convenient. <laughs> you, you need to do something with finances every day. Whether that's looking at your finances, whether that's um, what reading up on finances and stuff like that. People... The, like we we don't understand stuff because we don't go and research right we don't ask the holy spirit to get, show us give us more knowledge on this area and sometimes that will require us to go and seek out books for understanding listening to podcasts for understanding you know what i'm saying so every day have us time with god tomorrow we're going to add time where we look at our finances where we go our wild finances or whatever it is that you need to do. It needs to be something that's finance driven. Okay. So let's see. Do anybody have any questions? Comments? Okay. Let me go back to my little notes. Should have had that printed out. Um, I'm not trying to call somebody. Danielle, I just wanted to say with some of the things that you have mentioned about being tailor-made to yourself and using someone else's strategy to your own, it's confirmation because my pastor spoke a little bit on that today saying that, you know, you see someone else flourishing in one area even though you have a, a destiny for something else, but because you see them booming, you want to get out your lane and kind of get in on they have, but it's not for you. So therefore your anointing and your blessing is not flourishing because you didn't got out your lane. So thank you for that confirmation. Yes, ma'am. Let's see, the replays will be helpful. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Donna. I'm going to put the, um with the replays, Um, I have to... They're going to be on my laptop, but I'm going to put them on the public domain. I'm more than likely going to put them on my YouTube channels. So that way we can, like, everybody can have access to it and stuff like that. Um, so that's where we'll kind of go with that. Um, so the, I want to make sure we go with the anchor scriptures for tonight as well. Um, so the anchor scripture, the one that's like, I guess it's just first. But it talks about I want I want to I want to explain why I chose these scriptures, right? So the anchor scripture is seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. That's Matthew 6 and 33. So with that, 
it's saying seek God, seek the kingdom of God, right? It's telling us to seek the kingdom of God and live righteously. He will give. So that's that right there is knowledge. Like when I first heard that scripture, I used to be like, okay, he's going to give me something, you know, he'll give me, I, I related it to money instead of it's knowledge. It's more, it's more than money. If I seek the first, the kingdom of God, he's going to, and, and I live righteous, he's going to give me everything I need. And sometimes that looks like knowledge. Sometimes that looks like wisdom. That looks like grace sometimes. That looks like mercy. So when we start seek everything that we need, if we seek God for it, he's going to give it to us. So that's why it's so important that we put our we put God back in these finances or that we seek God for our finances. The other day I was I was in prayer time. And so um I was like, I was like, I, I just wrote down because I was praying over my business, and I was like, I want contracts, right? I want contracts. I want contract work, right? So because I and I and I'm gonna go to Facebook and say, anybody, if anybody, um I was going to say, if anybody's looking for a social worker that needs like part-time work, this contract work, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm your girl and all of this other kind of stuff. And then the Holy Spirit again was just like, so you're going to go ask them, but you're not going to ask me. So if I seek the kingdom of God, like I really started, I really started breaking down this, this whole, this whole, the word of God, you know what I'm saying? And so when I started, when I, when I did that and God was just like, you know, but so you're not going to ask me, like, then I began to write out the contract that I wanted that I'm like, okay, so if it's, if it's you that I need to come, this is the contract that I want. I want a contract that I only work 10 hours. Okay. I ain't trying to give them people no 40 hours. I want a contract that's 10 hours. I want it to be lucrative. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be lucrative. And in my mind, I was saying 10 hours, but I wrote, I mean, in my mind, I was saying 10 hours a week and like $3,000 a month. That's what I said in my mind. What I wrote was 10 hours a week, $3,000 a week too as well. And when I went back and read it, I was like, well, I did say that it was lucrative. And I did say, <laughs> you know, I was like, this would this I was like this contract would be unheard of, like especially for a social worker where you're working ten hours a week and you're making three thousand dollars, and then the Holy Spirit was like, so, but why can't I give you that? You you said you wanted it to be lucrative. Why can't I give you something like that? And then God reminded me of stuff that He has done before for me, where I had a contract that was brought to me. And this is another thing: when we start asking God and we start putting that thing that and realizing that we are heirs to the kingdom and that God is our Father and everything that we have, He He got it. When we start talking like that and we start being bold, God ain't got no choice but to move. Because it, it makes him excited. That's my daughter down there talking about who I am as her father. And so, you know, like, I were, and then God, I remember a time when I had asked God, I was like, look, I need a car. <laughs> you know, I was like, my boy, I need a car. And no, and God, when he told me, he was like, you write that contract. Cause I said, I want that contract to be so stand out that I know it's from nobody else but you. It would be unheard of for a social worker. It's not, it's not unheard of. Let me stop saying it. It's not common for a social worker to make $3,000 a week. And she only give 10 hours. They are, they really kind of like us or oh, whatever. But I did say that I wanted the contract to be lucrative. I did say that I needed it to sustain my bills, to help me to sustain. Like, I do have a plan for the money, and it's just not about me. It is not about greed. When we start having those things in mind, God, I need you to sustain my, my finances. I need you to sustain that so I can do stuff like this for free for your children. I still got to live. God's still going to provide, like, that's the attitude that we have to have when it comes to God. And when we start having that, God will make a way. And like I said, God reminded me that one time while I was sitting at my desk, I told him I needed a car. 
guy was sitting there. I was sitting at my desk. No lie. And this woman had called me. And she was like, hey, I got this contract that I want you to do. And she started giving me the details of it. And in 23 days, I made $7,000. I didn't go seek this contract. I don't know how she got my number. I told God what I needed. I told him that I was willing to do the work. And he provided. 20, that's the most money I've ever made in a short period of time like that. And I remember God said, I brought that woman to you. And it was, and I was only supposed to work that specific time. And I remember trying to, I'm going to work a little bit over it. God was like, nah, this is, you need a car. Here you go. Boom. And I bought my, I put the dozen money to it and I bought a car in cash. So God still was able to provide. So like, this is what I'm saying. When we go into God, we go into God with these requests. It may be seen, it may be seen in bold or unordinary, but that's the type of father we have. We can go to him boldly. He talks about going to the throne of grace boldly. He wanted to. So that's the type of expectations that, that, that I want y'all to have. I'm still praying for this contract where I exchange 10 hours a week and I get paid $3,000, okay? I'm serious. I'm still praying for that. That's on my list of things to do. And if some of y'all don't know, I'm still also praying for this million dollar year with God. So I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going bold before it's gone and I'm asking them like my, my boy, here we go. We got a thousand. We trying to make a million dollars. So have those type of expectations when you are sitting down and whatever the wildest dream that you need, whatever, whatever it is that you want, I want you to ask God about that. Have that expectations for him. He can handle it. He can tell you yes, or he can tell you no, or he can tell you you need to work a little bit more. And also with this, having these expectations and stuff like that, also be willing to do the work. In the um in my in my um in the email that I sent y'all, I sent y'all the anchor words to stand on too. While I was while I was praying about this, God still gave me the words that He want. He was like, "This is what I need. To, I, I need for my people too. Y'all gonna have to sacrifice some stuff. You gonna have to have discipline. You gonna have to work hard, and you gonna have to be consistent." That's also like I'm not I'm not out here. I'm, I'm not trying to tell y'all that yo, this gonna be easy. This gonna be no, it ain't gonna be easy. It ain't gonna be <laughs> it, it, it ain't gonna be easy, but it's doable. If you sacrifice and you have some discipline and you work hard and you be consistent, that's what God wants us. This God ain't no God, God can do what he wants, but God doesn't want us to fumble the blessing. That is my prayer. God, I don't never want to fumble your blessings that you give me. I don't want, I don't want to, or either I don't want your blessing to be such a burden on me to where I, I'm not, well, well, I'm not prepared. And then I begin to look at your blessing as a burden instead of it being a blessing because I wasn't prepared because I wasn't disciplined because I did not, you know what I'm saying? Um, even the Bible speaks of that the blessing of the Lord causes no sorrow. So we gonna work. We gonna sacrifice up in here. We gonna be disciplined. We gonna we gonna we gonna do hard work, and we gonna be consistent. And sacrifice is looking like you waking up fifteen minutes in the morning and praying. You you know sacrifices us pushing the food away. All of that. That's the type of sacrifice that we need and stuff. So the other scriptures that we're also standing on is Philippians. 4, 6 to 7, and it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard, will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to, um, I'm, I have a formula for that prayer. I'm a, I'm a um I'm a person that I'm a visual learner, and so when um I was looking at that prayer, God had gave me like a little diagram and stuff like that, and so I want to show y'all that tomorrow, so that way you can actually understand that scripture and how 
God is saying, pray about everything. Everything that we're going through. Everything. Whether it's God, you know, something so small as what in your in my eyes or somebody else's eyes, God, like I'm I'm struggling with getting up early in the morning. Could you help me, God? Could you help me get up in the morning? Could you help me get up two minutes early in the morning? Whatever it is, God wants you to pray about everything. And then um, the next one is, um, so that was Philippians 4, 6 to 7. And then the next one is Romans 12 and 2. And it's how, it says, Do, don't copy the behaviors and custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you and uh, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And so I know that some of those translations for this scripture, which is on um, Romans 12 and 2, it talks about transforming your mind and stuff like that. That right there, the reason why that's an anchor scripture, because a lot of us is going to have to transform our mind when it comes to our finances. So we're going we're gonna, to... That scripture is going to be really heavy on family when we start learning about family history because that's important. That scripture, because we're going to have to transform the way we think about money. Either we have a lack mindset with, or we have, we have a lack, a poverty mindset or whatever. Like we don't, we just don't, it's, it's something right there. So when we, when we go over that, we're going to have to do the transforming of the mind in that one too. So that's why that was an anchor scripture. And of course, the last one um, is Matthew 17 and 21 that talks about some of these things can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. So those are what we got coming up. Um, let me go over the nights with y'all. If y'all got any questions, y'all go ahead and drop them in the comment section. Or y'all can come off of mute if you want to. In X. Okay, so um, tonight was about fasting. Tomorrow night will be about family history and money. Uh, Monday, family history and money. Tuesday will be behavior patterns and money. Um, so those will be the therapy, right? Those will be the therapy nights. Um, what it was I got money to Wednesday will be budgeting. I know that um a lot of y'all may be in your own Bible study class that night. I I didn't I didn't really pay attention to when I was making the schedule because I probably would have chose what well, I did. I did I chose that night because I wanted I don't know, budgeting on Wednesday. I, I'm I'm gonna look at it again. Um Thursday will be family night. So maybe bring your kids. And the reason why I chose these two nights back to back, because when you start budgeting and stuff like that, I want you to bring your kids because I want your kids to understand a little bit more about money. So we'll probably be doing something that's kid friendly too that night as well. You can start teaching children about money as early as two. Really and uh, really and truly. Like a kid needs to understand what how money works what it is that is just not free. You can start teaching a kid about, you know, money when it comes to them picking up their toys. If you pick up all your toys, I'm going to give you 25 cents. If you don't have 25 cents, you give them 10 cents, whatever it is, you know, they'll start working for it. And then you start at the, um, if they want something, when they go to the store, well, go get your money, go get your money. Like it can be age appropriate and then it could be as early as two. And I think that that is so important because, when kids start learning about money, that changes the family tree as well, too. So we got um, family night, which is going to be Thursday. Um, Friday will be about how to fix your credit. And Saturday will be about how to create extra income. Um, when I was creating this program or when I was thinking about it, um, I was working with this branding specialist. And she was the one that gave me the idea about... Um, having a night where I talked about how to create extra income. Cause she was like, a lot of people can tell you about finances, but nobody is showing us about how to create extra income and stuff like that. And she was like, a lot of people problem is, I was like, you know what? A lot of people problem is 
it's not enough money. It's not enough money in the budget or whatever. And so um, she was like, that's that's a lot of problems. So she's like, maybe you can teach them about how to make extra money. So when we talk about making extra money, I want y'all to have an open mind, like real life, okay? <laughs> I want y'all to have an open mind. I'm not going to tell y'all to go out there and get on the pole. I'm not going to say that, but I am going to ask you to, what are you good at? I want you to step outside your box when it comes to making money. And it's easy to make money nowadays. It, it really is. Whatever talent that you have. Our, the Bible says that our gifts will make room for us. So if you have a talent, use it. And that's what we're going to talk about that night. How are we? How can we use our talents? How can we make extra money? Ask in the Holy Spirit. Give us some ideas to make extra money. Um, and making sure we start teaching our children. My mama started introducing us to... My mama introduced us to finances because she was a single mom, but she introduced us to finance movie, movies in the seventh grade. Um, my brother had this, um, this woman was going to pay for my brother to go to Canada. And so, mind you, we in the seventh grade. No, we, we was in eighth grade. We in eighth grade. And so, like, this woman was like, I'll pay for your son to go to Canada or whatever. And my mom was like, well, he can't go to Canada if Danielle can't. So, my mom started introducing us to how to raise money, fundraising. We sold raffle tickets. We sold plates. When I say we hustled, we hustled. And I would never forget. That was just such an ingrained moment in my life when it comes to finances or whatever. Because that's, that was all the way that we could go. My mom was like, look, I ain't got that kind of money. It's $3,000. I can't send you that year. Um, so you, we're going to have to fundraise. And she started teaching me about fundraising and stuff like that. We was in the eighth grade. Now, what if she would have taught me that in the second, when I was two? I would have had a better understanding of money then. But nonetheless, we got it. And here I am today. So anybody got any questions, comments, concerns, or anything? Cause that's all I got tonight. Honestly, that is all I have. Does does anybody look? One more question. Does anybody have any fears when it comes to money? Okay, who we got? Mm, I feel like I have any enough. Not having any. Mm. Okay. I'm so far in debt. I do care if I can't ever get out. That is, that is a real fear. That right there, I can honestly say that about my student loans. I was so afraid of them. Like, no lie. So afraid of them. Let's see. I'm worried that I will not have enough to give my children the kingdom life they deserve. That's, that's a big fear too. Not, not having enough to pay the, to pay the bills. Like that's also, that's also a fear too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not having enough money to pay the bills. I'm I'm I need a pop up bills that hit hard. Absolutely, that's a fear. Like these are like really and truly, and how God is working with me now with money. It's a whole different it's a whole different era that I'm having to, I'm afraid of being, I'm afraid, as much as I say that I'm going to God saying the million dollars, I'm also afraid of the million dollars at the same time. Like crazy, crazy, but it's the truth. 
like I know my business is going to be a multi-million dollar business. God has already told me I'll be a multi-million dollar by the time I'm 40. I'm 37. But I'm still, I'm afraid of it too. Afraid that it may not come. Afraid that when it does come, then what? What do I do? How do I handle it? How do I handle the stress that like, it's a, it's, it's a lot that we are dealing with. And this is why we have to tackle a lot of these mindsets. You know what I'm saying? Not having a safety net or big enough, enough savings. That's true. I'm reckless when it comes to money. I hate that. That is, that is true too. Oh, being the sole provider. Absolutely. My God. What is, what is my, what is my helpmate? Okay, like Jesus, where's where please about being a, not having enough, a safety net or big enough. That's that's real. I'm reckless when it comes to money and I hate it. Let me see what else we got up in here. I'm reading the thing. I'm scared to have to be the solo provider for my kids in the job I'm not jobbing right now. Ooh. Ain't that the truth? I'm scared to have to be the sole provider for my kids and the job not jobbing right now. That that right, that's real. Can you hear me, Dale? Yes, ma'am. So I was I was trying to type mine, but my finger's not working fast enough. Um, I saw y'all say the sole provider, but my fear is that um, even though I am married, having a having my partner who is now sick and not working. That's a big fear that that would ever happen happen to happen again for me. I can't hardly talk about it, but just having to go through another life struggle, knowing that initially we were okay, and then life happened, cancer happened, and now we're having to struggle with these finances. Mm -hmm. And I'm married, but I feel like the sole provider because I'm the only one working due to her sickness. So that's a huge fear. I'm just scared of what life is gonna bring because I know it's always twists and turns. But when it comes down to it. We have to have money to survive. So what if one of us is down and the other one has to work and I can't carry all the bills and I'm not prepared. So that's scary for me, just getting back on my feet and hoping that life doesn't give me another terrible blow. Right. And then I'll be back to where I am now. You see what I'm saying? So scary. Or even being scared and like not have enough money to go see a doctor. Right. That's scary. Yep. Some Ooh, of us, right. Some of us are actually facing that right now. We don't have enough money to go see about ourselves. That's why I told God, like, I need you to provide enough money so I can go see about myself with my health. So let's see. I've been there. We lost the entire income and I had to work less to take care of him, double whammy. So like this is all these this is <laughs> this is all things that we like that we kind of fear when it comes to money and not knowing if we're gonna have enough and stuff like that. And this is all things that we need to go and we need to take to God. And God is saying, I'm there and I'm and I'm here and I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna do what needs to be done. So this is I'm excited to hear about some of this stuff. When I say that I'm excited, I'm not excited about, <laughs> I'll be telling my clients that, I'll be like, I'm excited. And they be like, you excited to hear me go through my pain and my struggles? It's not that I'm excited to hear about your pain and your struggles, but I'm excited to understand and to know that this gives God an opportunity to show himself strong. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited that we're going to have a front row seat. And that's what I feel like we kind of need to look at how it is with our finances. We have a front row seat to watch God work. And if we start changing our mindset to that, my, I know you finna come through. <laughs> I know my boy finna come through. We kind of have to change our mindset and be like, God, look at God finna come through here. God I'm finna have, I'm finna have a front row seat of my boy working this thing out some kind of way. And I know that that can be difficult because sometimes I'll be like, my boy, we it's 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 
it's the bottom hour. <laughs> it's the bottom hour. But a lot of times I'm trying to catch myself. I'm trying to move forward. Like, God, I know that this gives you an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, work for this fast. I kind of got, I got excited because again, this is a time for me to, I can get excited because I get to set um, this time aside to really and truly work and, and seek God. And I know that he's going to show up. That's the thing. Like I'm getting excited. I know he's going to show up. So that's kind of like the the mindset when it comes to some of the things that we um that I want us to change about it. Like yes, we this is our fear and stuff like that. That we still need to tell God what our fears are. We still need to acknowledge. That's that's the therapy part about it. I still need you to acknowledge how you feel, but I also still need you to say, just give God an opportunity to work that thing out of my faith. Whether you believe it or not, in therapy, we do this thing. I can't tell you not to do something without giving you something to do in, in place of it. That's why a lot, of, a lot of stuff don't work. When people say, stop doing this, but they don't give you something else to do. So I want you to still confess your fears, but I also want you to still say, but this gives God the opportunity to work. Whether you believe that in the beginning or not, I still need you to say it, though. And then slowly you'll start believing it. And then it begins to become viable for you. All right. So anybody else have any questions or concerns or anything like that that they want to say? Because it is 17, and like I said, I want us to still be true to our time and stuff like that. Um, looking, looking to learn more. All right. I'm excited, too. I'm excited about this. Um, my goal is to send y'all out some, um, let's see. I was really late jumping on. Where can I find the recording? Um, after this right here, when it downloads to my um laptop, it I'm gonna try to upload it to um. I think I'll just send it out to y'all. I'll be able to send y'all the link. I'm gonna see what I can do, cause I'm not sure what it's gonna actually be yet. I want it to be to my Zoom iCloud, but I ain't got enough storage over there. So I may have to just send it to, um, send y'all a link to my YouTube channel. Let's see. I recently learned from a minister about asking God for financial strategy. What's your take? Absolutely. That is something that we're going to talk about too. Asking God for a uh, financial strategy. When I was talking about asking God for a tailor-made plan, you that right there can be your financial strategy too. Tailor-made plan or financial strategy is just interchangeable, but that actually works for you. And it's like an actual strategy that you can follow and stuff like that. So absolutely, like when I say we're going to God about strategy, yes, we're going, no, we just not, I don't want us to think like, what I have come to learn is if I tell God, I'll do my part and my part is sometimes working, God, I'll, I'll, I'll work the extra hours if I have to. Or God, I'll do it. If you, if you allow me to, I know I've said this with clients, if you allow me to have more clients, I'll do the work. And God brought the clients and I did the work. Like it's a partnership with us when it comes to these finances. And when we start asking God, I, I want, that's why I say it's hard work in this thing too. God, you give me, the, God, you do this, I'll do this. And then it begins to be a partnership. What we learned about today in Transformation Church is a partnership with God. That's why I said, God, give me the contract and I'll, do, I'll give the 10 hours. So I'm not going to, I'm not asking God for nothing I, that I won't do nothing to help out. God doesn't need help, but hey, I like to offer it sometimes. My boy, I can do this and you can do that. He take what I, he take the little that I have and he multiply it. So, Yes, ma'am. All right, y'all. So that is going to be tonight's class. Um, we are going to close out with prayer. Um, we'll start back again tomorrow at 6 15. Um, you got something you want to say, Amber? 
<laughs> I was typing. I didn't even know that I hit the video, but I was trying to say, you said you were going to show us that outfit, and you ain't showed us that outfit, baby. Like, Uh, the girl with the bat. Let's go on Facebook because I can't. I can barely see it. But yeah, this is the little outfit right here today. <laughs> All right, y'all. So let's just go ahead. Thank, thank you, Miss Donna. <laughs> thank y'all. <laughs> Y'all know, and, and it's it's from Amazon. My good people over there, at Amazon. Amazon need to give me a um a deal, a sponsorship, or something. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and pray, and then we're gonna go ahead and get on up out of here. Father God, we thank you upon today, God. We thank you for coming. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for visiting us upon today, Father God. We just, I just want to say thank you for your children that came tonight, Father God. Um, please give them a special blessing, Father God. You have heard their fears when it comes to their finances, God. Lord God, I am lifting them up unto you, God. The ones who spoke out and the ones that did not speak out, Father God. You know what their fears are when it comes to the finances, Father God. So, Father God, I know that you are God and I know that you can move, Father God. Please give them comfort. Please give them joy. Speak to their hearts upon tonight, Father God. And when we wake up until tomorrow, Father God, we have joy upon tomorrow, Father God, that we know that we can make this. Give us a spirit of, hey, we got this. We can do this, Father God. Lord God, I thank you upon tonight, Father God. Continue to meet us here every night at 615, Holy Spirit. Um, And I thank you and I praise you in advance. Amen. Amen, y'all. Love y'all. If y'all don't have anything else, I will see y'all tomorrow. But if you got some questions, please let me know. I'll be on here. <laughs>